Okay, it's recording. Now I have to be professional. Wow, so many people. This is good. Okay, so first and foremost, just a check. Um, got a few people online. Can people hear me? And can people see the, the presentation? It's always a good start. Um, just um, drop us a little message in the chat window so I know there are, are, are people there. Cool chats, always good. Great stuff. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Vadims. The sound is good. Super. In that case, I'll think about beginning. Thanks very much for coming online. Um, been doing these for a couple of weeks now, and uh, we've had a, um, a great deal of success. It's nice to see so many people, um, so many people online. I have to um, excuse me taking the other sip. It's, um, it's difficult to talk for um, for, for two hours at a time. Um, firstly, a little bit of an introduction to myself. Um, my name's Ian Maynard. I've been working for Mimosa for coming up for two years now. Um, so this was working for Mimosa pre pre the Airspan um, Airspan takeover. Um, my background is I'm a, I'm a wireless engineer. I've been a wireless engineer for oh, probably 15, nearly 15, 20 years. You can tell by the grey in the beard, it's been a little while. Um, and I've done a variety of positions, a variety of technologies, everything from the old fashioned free space optics, the laser, laser products through to, to, to license microwave to and sort of everything in between. So the encompassing Wi-Fi and other products like that. Um, I consider myself a practical engineer. Um, I'm still a, a trained climber. And um, up until two years ago, I was still regularly climbing to 120, 130 meters um, and doing um, installations at the tops of towers in, in, in Scotland. Um, again, that's it. That's a, that's a young man's game, so I'll, um, I'll leave that to the leave that to the younger lads. So my role within Mimosa is as a as a sales engineer. I cover Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, there's a team of three of us covering the territory: um, myself uh, and a colleague called Andrew Westerman, in based in the UK, um, and. Uh, a, a guy called Christine Ali, who's um, who's based in the um, in in Dubai. So between us, we run around a lot and we cover a lot cover a lot of ground. But it's um, it, it's our job to to help you. As a as a sales engineer, um, I work with our, our distributors, with our distribution channel and our resellers. Um, I'm here to provide training. I'm here to provide technical advice, technical help with. Um, with installations um, and if you have a big pilot project um, that you need help with um, I'm quite happy to come out into country um, work with your guys train your guys um, and run up and down towers and show them how to do it uh, in, the, in, in the real world um, obviously not traveling much at the moment with the, uh, the madness that's going on with this ridiculous disease but um, hopefully the um, Times will, times will be changing and we'll be allowed to travel soon. So the point of today is to give you a little bit of an overview of the Mimosa products, our, our design philosophy and the range of products that we've got. Um, a, little talk, a little chat about the cloud system, about the management and the, and the design behind the, how uh, to pull a, a network together. Um, and then we'll follow that with another couple of sessions next week and the week after. Um, one focusing on the point to multi-point offering and one focusing on the, on the point to point offering. I'm gonna try and keep all of these as informal as possible. I'm not good at formal. Um, and also, I'm going to keep them as practical as possible. 
Um, I'm lucky enough, I've got, I've got a little bit of space here. Um, I've got the space to set radios up. So I've got some example radios we can log on to and configure and I can show you the user interfaces of a, of a running system. I've also got access to a few customer systems as well. Um, I can get into and, and show you. So, without further ado, oh, before, before, if you have questions, feel free to send, send the easiest thing is probably send a little chat message. Um, don't be formal. If you have a question, um, drop me a, 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 a question as you, as you think of it. Um, I'll either answer it, answer it then or make a note and, uh, and get back to you at the end. So we'll see how it goes. So what do Mimosa do? Um, we, we call ourselves hybrid, we were, our solutions hybrid fiber wireless. Um, so what do I mean by that? Um, we want to provide the speed and functionality of a fiber solution uh, without the endless time digging and, and, and messing around and permissions and all of the long lead time involved in, um, in, in a fiber solution. In most places around the world, if you can get fiber, it's the best solution. It's fast, it goes in, it does the job, provided nobody dig, dig, digs it up and, um, uh, and loses, a, uh, loses your connection, all is good. Um, our solutions provide a great bridge, uh, if you'll excuse the, the, the reference, from, from where the fiber is within the, within the city or within the country or within the area to where the customers customers are. So actually getting it out to where the where, where the need is. And we've got a variety of, of products, um, both in license and unlicensed and point to point and, and point to multi-point to fill those needs. So if it's a single high capacity customer, you may want to install a point to point for lease line replacement or something like that. If you've got a community that you want to give internet access to, then multi, the point, point to multi point radios are, um, are designed for that purpose. So we've got a range of products for a range of applications. And part of what I want to show today is looking at the planning tool and working out what's going to be the best products for, for, the, for different scenarios. So the product family. Um, why do we think we've got such great products. So you can see here, a wide range of products, from little antennas to big antennas, and everything in between. We believe Mimosa have the best price performance index in, in the industry. There are products that are, are much cheaper. There are products out there that are, 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 are much more expensive. Uh, you've got Microtech, uh, Ubiquiti, uh, people like that um, at, the, at the cheaper end of the uh, end of the spectrum, and the Cambiums of this world um, at the top. You know, the, the, the high-end Cambium um, solution is a very, very expensive solution. But what we believe we give is the best balance between the price you pay and the performance you get. So cost per megabit, if you want to look at it um, in, in, in those terms. Now we design our products um, to be carrier class products. Um, the products are built solidly, they're built to go up on a mast, they're built to be robust, and they're built to carry on, carry on working and, carry, and, 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 and stay there. When you install a Mimosa product, I want you to be sure that if you install it properly, it's going to go there, go up there. It's going to provide service, and you're not going to be going back to fix the damn thing. Um, in most um, wireless solutions, most most wireless cases, the products aren't expensive. The, the, the products aren't big capital um, purchases. The biggest cost in any installation is generally the manpower to get it in and get it working. So the last thing you want to do is spend lots and lots of time revisiting a, a network that isn't working or, or that has failing elements. So we build solid, reliable products to stop that. The other thing I guess we need to look at is the is radio design. The MOSA are 
a radio company, we're an RF company. All we do is fix wireless access. We're not a, route, a, a routing vendor. We don't make lots of Wi-Fi products. Um, our focus is on fixed wireless access. So we don't put lots of routing, routing features um, in, in, in the products. We've got some, we've got what, in, enough that you need to build a small WISP, but if you want a full on router, go to Cisco, go to Microtik. Um, they, make great, they make great routers. We put, put our focus and our development focus on building a wireless product that works and, uh, and works cleanly. And that in the, the very, very crowded um, radio spectrum that we have in most countries is absolutely key. Clean, um, running, that doesn't interfere with others and is less prone to interference from others. And we've got some features within the, the physical design of the radios and antennas that do this. And I'll, I'll come to those as we go into more detail. Next point is, 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 is variety, the next two points. We've got the uh, solutions in, in, in licensed spectrum. We've got solutions in unlicensed spectrum. Um, obviously, licensed and unlicensed changes across the world. We're a global company. Something that may be unlicensed in the States is, um, is, is maybe licensed in Kazakhstan. Um, I think everything's licensed in Kazakhstan. They, 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 they just like money. Um, so, but we have a range, a range of frequencies, a range of products, and those are in both point, point to point and point to multi point. In general, the license type products are point to point, and as we go further and bring on new products, they will be going into more licensed territory. So why, why Mimosa? Um, we kind of build, the, the, the product set is built on, on, on four pillars, four jigsaw pieces that when, when going together make Mimosa. Um, the first part is, um, part of where our, our name comes from, is, is, is the MIMO technology. You need radio that gives you speed. Um, so we use MIMO technology, which, which is multiple data streams on one antenna, to make best use of the, um, the available radio spectrum. So if you take a, a channel, you have a frequency, we will run a couple of data streams, or we'll one, one in, in vertical polarization, and another in horizontal polarization, to make best use of what's there. Um, if you have a full MIMO system, one of our, um, our, 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 our access points with the full stream technology and the correct antenna, You've got four data streams there, and the, the, the client radios will choose which are the best to get the best, the best signal. So you get the, the, the benefits of, of, of software-based beamforming. So MIMO technology is something that's very close to our heart, and so it's part of where our name comes from. Nothing to do, to do with champagne and, um, and, and orange juice at all, although I'm told the guys in the States do enjoy a drink. Second part, is the TDMA, is, is TDMA operation. We have our own proprietary um, over the air um, TDM protocol, which we call SRS, which allows um, spectrum reuse. Now, the joy of TDMA radios is that if you combine a TDMA radio with the, the frequency division stuff like the traditional um, big microwave uh, technology, such as the, the Sears or Ericsson's or um, NEC of, the, of this world, the, the cost of radio, of, of a TDMA radio over a, a frequency division radio is a lot less. Um, we've got a very, very tight, close, um, integrated relationship with Quantenna, um, who build the, the chipsets our radios are based on. So our radios are based around a Wi-Fi type um, chipset, but we're operating in a, car in, in a, in a carrier space. And we're, 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 we're content to give us really good access to the source code on the, um, on the chipset. It lets you get right down in there and, and leverage the, the technology they, they provide us in, in the best possible way. 
One of the other advantages, one of the things we need for, 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 for the TDMA to work properly is proper clock, is, is proper clock synchronization. Um, if you're running uh, a link and you're putting the, uh, the data into frames and timing it that way, you've got to have a good clock source. So as part of our hardware, we have uh, a GPS uh, receiver built in for most of for, for most of our most of our pieces of hardware. So we can synchronize the radios to each other. We can synchronize the radios to the the, the, the global GPS clock, which means we can do things like you re, you reuse frequencies. We can synchronize when radios transmit and synchronize when radios receive so that we can reuse frequencies and not self-interfere. And this is something that's baked in. It's something that's, that, that, that's part of the hardware. If you go to other vendors, you're, if you want to do G GPS synchronization, you're gonna need to buy GPS modules, extra cables, um, and lots and lots and lots of messing around. With Mimosa, it's there, it's built into the B-series radios and the access points and point to multipoint. Um, it's not built into the lower grade point to point, uh, point to point products, but I've got a hack to get around that. I'll show you that one. The last part of the jigsaw is, is cloud management. Um, it's a free service um, for every Mimosa radio. Um, it's when you get a Mimosa radio, one of the things you have to do is, get, is build yourself a cloud, cloud account, get yourself a cloud account. Um, this enables you to manage the networks, for, manage your, your networks for free, provided they can see the internet. You can turn it off, but um, it enables you to do it. Um, you can manage the radios um, via SNMP uh, in a normal way, set up syslogs, all of those sort of things, but we provide a nice little graphical um, web GUI for you to see what's going on, which is cute. The other part of it is the, is the cloud stuff um, manages your inventory of radios, manages your licensing, unlock, and software and, and, and software inventories for the radios. So we keep everything tied into one. And I'll talk a little bit more about cloud um, at the end. In fact, what I'll do is I'll give you a, a little bit of a demonstration, a live demo of the cloud. Now, I mentioned the um, SRS and the SYNC, so just very, very, very brief, briefly. Um, we work with the GPS, and so this is baked into most of the products. Um, so we have a fixed clock reference set by the GPS. So we can set our, 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 our TDMA window to two, four, eight milliseconds, whatever you need, and then synchronize the radios to the GPS. So if you have two, two radios, you configure them to be the same gender, gender A, and they will both transmit on the rising edge of the clock pulse. And you know that in the, at the, at the, at the, the, the falling edge of the clock pulse, they'll be in receive mode. So all the radios transmit and receive at the same time. If you've got two radios on the same channel, back to back, you know that they're, they're gonna be doing this. But talking, receiving, talking, receiving. If they were talking, whilst this one's receiving, the chances are some backscatter from here is going to be picked up as interference here. So we can synchronize like so. The other thing this gives us is the ability to do um, traffic splits. So we can put 50-50, um, 75-25, 25, 25-75, and bias the time slots in one direction or another. So it's, it's a very, very um, handy thing to have. Um, and said so it's, it's a standard uh, within the product. I'll move on. We can talk, we'll talk more about this a little bit later on when, um, and more in, in more detail when we talk about the configuration of the products. So, I lost myself for a second. So what I'm gonna do is to start off with is talk about the point to multi-point products. Um, and this is where I need to zip off to one side and grab a couple of props. One moment.
That would be far more professional if I'd done that bit before. Never mind. So, point to multi point products. First, we're going to talk about the access point products, about the base stations. Um, there are two in the range. There are three in the range, but we're, um, we're migrating across. Current product set is the A5 and A5C. Um, but we're, we're moving away from, from, from A5 soon. So A5. is one I prepared earlier. A5 is an integrated quad sector access point. It's literally single unit, 14 dBi antenna built in, two by two MIMO, fit and forget. This is our, our, our original access point. Now we're not selling too many of these um, because we, have, we, we launched A5C and A5C gives us some advantages. So we're, um, we're, we're concentrating on, on, on A5C. These give you a good, um, a good indication of the way that um, our, our product naming works. Um, this is an access point, and it's an access point in, in five gigahertz, so A5. A5C is an access point. It's an access point in five gigahertz, but it has connectors rather than its own antenna. Now those connectors mean we can now run four by four MIMO. The A5 was only two, was only two stream MIMO, which gives us the MIMO advantage. Remember, we're Mimosa, so, so MIMO is important to us. So this paired with a 360 degree antenna will give you greater gain and thereby a greater, um, a, a greater speed for your clients. So the point is, you've got scalable, unlicensed point-to-multipoint solutions. You've got ultra-high client capacity. Each client can run around about um, 500 meg over the air. Um, I will say that's right. That that's a uh, that's upstream and di downstream. You're not going to get 500 meg in one direction. But you know, if you if, if you work with master master, you can get 200, 200, and, uh, 200 250 um, meg full duplex. You're not going to get every client doing it all the time, but you get you get a few. Most clients will happily run and see 100 meg speeds. So your client capacity is great. You're looking at, at capacities in networks that are similar to high-speed wired networks, hybrid to the curb type networks. And they're an absolute doddle to install and get subscribers away. So they're the access points. We've just added a new one, which I don't have here because I've not got my demo unit yet which is our new A5X product. Um, slightly smaller form factor, um, same frequencies, same capacity. Uh, this one, is, a, this one is, only to, is only a two by two device. SRS, so it's got the GPS um, baked in as, um, as standard. And it's super, super, super low power consumption. Um, which is great for a um, an eco pot for somewhere that's that's the, the where the power isn't great and you've got to run solar or wind um, as a relay point. Um, it's a really really useful little product and it's about half the price of this um, A5C. So if you have a small cluster of um, a, a small cluster. A5X is a really, really good place to be. In terms of comparisons, the only place it's, it, it, where, it, where it's losing is a little bit of capacity in Wi-Fi in wi mode. And you're gonna lose a little bit of range because it's only 2v2. It's not got the full 4x4 MIMO to, to push out. 
In all other areas, it's, it's um, equivalent to the, the, to the current product range, the A5, A5C product range. Um, a note on, on client counts and, oper and operating modes. Um, I mentioned earlier on I'm an engineer. Um, so there are, there are marketing figures and then there are engineering figures. Um, the client counts are across here are in perfect conditions. Um, as an engineer, I won't specify a radio using for, with the with the whole forty four clients on. Um, there's no reason why it won't happen. There's no reason why it wouldn't work in perfect conditions. But in in the real world, we know as engineers we all operate in, in imperfect conditions. There's always interference. There's always problems. And you're always going to get retransmissions and, um, and, and, and issues. Um, I would maybe hold, pull that SRS limit down to maybe 30 clients, just to be safe. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can run the full 44, um, but in a noisy environment, I'd maybe want to bring that limit down. The same goes for Wi-Fi mode. If you run in Wi-Fi mode, you, you, you're running in normal. Wi-Fi type CSMA CD mode. So your clients will listen, they'll wait for a gap in transmissions, then they'll transmit. You can see in, in, in Wi-Fi mode, A5X supports slightly less clients than A5C. It hasn't got um, quite as beefy a processor in it, so it's, um, it, it struggles with, um, with, with lots and lots and lots of Wi-Fi clients. In the real world, is anybody going to build a system with 100 Wi-Fi clients on? Um, you know as well as I do, again, looking at it from an, engineer, from an engineering point of view, that your contention um, ratios um, would, give you, um, would give you problems. Uh, just seeing notes on the chat, um, is it possible to rewatch later? Yes, I am recording this, and I'll make it available. Um, so, Whilst you can put 100 users on an A5C, I suggest you maybe treat that as a, as a limit of 70, 70 for, um, for, for Wi-Fi mode. But even so, it's a very, very powerful um, access point. So there are our access points. There's our, our radio hardware. Now, I've already recommended the connectorized one, so I guess the no thing, that next thing I should, I should show you is the antennas. So we have three Mimosa antennas. Um, now, this is standard five gigahertz. There is absolutely no reason why you couldn't use um, somebody else's antenna, use KPI or MT KP Performance or MTI or um, even um, the RF Elements horns. We've got some great installations with people using um, RF elements horns. Um, however, we design our antennas, our antennas to, be, to be different. Um, RF, RF elements horns are brilliant, brilliant, brilliant devices. Um, they built in a, a step in the, uh, in, 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 in the horn, which, what, which works wonderfully to uh, remove side lobes. Um, we had a lot of people, a, a lot of people installing our radios with RF element horns. Now the great thing is you've lost the side lobe. The problem is because it's a horn, the contact patch on the ground is not the same as a, as a regular sector antenna. So we worked to build ourselves something that had the coverage pattern of a sector antenna with the um, interference mitigation and side load suppression of the horn. And we came up with N545. Now there are two models. Um, this is the X2. So this is the, it, it's a two port antenna. So with this, you're gonna get 2B2 MIMO. So you've got one horizontal and one vertical stream. You see the, the design of it here, it's angled up to the camera. You see we've got this strange little curve here. 
On the vertical surface here, it's difficult to do watching the camera image and looking at make sure I've got the right place. This vertical surface here has the little RF gutter. So the side lobes are caught. So this gives you a 45 degree sector pattern. It's got a gain of 19 dBi and it's suppressing the side lobes. It's also very, very well shielded um, front to back. So the front to back ratio, the front to back isolation is 43 dB. So you get very, very little out of the back. Conversely, you get very little coming in. Manish, I'm about to um, answer that question. You're about to see, you're about to see why. Manish, Manish asked him what, what scenario you'd need for um, end connectors. So, two port antenna, happily working. If you want to go a little bit further, you're gonna need extra gain. So we have N545 X4, which is the only thing I didn't get. One moment, this one's a little large. So, this little fella is N545X4. So called because it's an antenna with four connectors on the back. Why do we need four connectors? Why do we need four connectors on the radio? Well, four, four works, works well together. What the the four connectors does is allow us to run four streams. So rather than the, the two, streams, um, in, 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 two, two streams in one frequency, we can run four streams. So four horizontal, four vertical, with a little bit of physical separation over the antenna. So we now have four streams running out and coming out of the access point. The client radio, will only work with two streams, will work with two streams. So what, it, what, what it's doing is it's seeing four streams and the four streams have got a little bit of, a little bit of separation vertically. It's gonna pick the two best streams of the four streams. So these may be skewed through reflection, interference. Um, you're gonna have different polarities, different bounces, but the client will pick the two best data streams and lock to those and work with those. So in a moving, noisy, messy RF environment, by having MIMO, by having multiple paths out across the air, you're gonna have four different streams which are affected in four different ways. The client is receiving two, the, re the client will receive the best two and transmit on the best two. Effectively, it's a form of beam steering, it's a form, form of software beam steering. So the, the, the radio will always, will always talk on the, best, on the best channel. And in real terms, it gives you another 3 dB of gain. So this antenna here, which is um, rated for 19 dBi, 19 dBi of gain, Effectively, two of these together, together, a 19 dBi becomes 21 dBi. So it gives you an extra 3 dB. That extra 3 dB is either a little bit more distance or a slightly better signal. A slightly better signal corresponds to a better data rate. I'll talk more about that in a second. So those two, the, the, the X2 and X4 are for, a, generally for a tower up high, pushing out into the countryside or pushing out across the city in a 45 degree, degree angle. 
You've got some brackets on them so you can down tilt them, so you can put them up nice and high on the tower, point them at the city below, and give yourself a nice, um, a, a, a nice contact patch. One thing to mention is that all of our radios, all of our, our, our five gigahertz radios, and the antennas have this extended frequency range, 4.9, 6.4 gigahertz. The core five gigahertz band from five through to um, just around like five, eight, five, nine, just under six is very, very, very congested. If you're able to use the low band, or the high band, the above six band, it's um, very, very much less crowded. And there's a lot less manufacturers producing products for, for, for that area. So if you've got a noisy centre section, you can move up, up to the top and, um, and, and do it, if you're allowed. Last antenna I've got to show you is for, for down in the city. Um, this is the 360 antenna. Let's move back a little bit. Again, this has four inputs, so it's going to run MIMO. You're going to get that extra three, the, the, the extra three or so dB to give you the extra gain and give you a little bit further push, a little bit, a little bit more push. That extra three dB might be the difference between uh, a radio running at 200 megabits per second or 300 megabits per second. The point with this one is the vertical is, is, is the, 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 the vertical down, the down, down tilt up tilt like here, here is quite small so this needs to be installed at a similar kind of height to the clients around it so don't go putting this on top of a hill and expecting it to cover the city below because the radio waves will come out sideways and they'll fly 200 meters over the top of all of your customers and your customers won't see anything. Um, I had uh, a client in, in, in Greece doing that. So he, he phoned me up to the end, I've, I've installed your, um, your radio, um, I've installed your antenna, it looks really nice, but nothing's happening, the clients can't see. And he sent me some photographs and yeah, he was on a tower, on a hill, one of these up at the top, and all these clients were down below pointing up and um, i swear the the radio energy must have been 50 60 meters over the over the tops of their heads they were getting absolutely nothing so correct products for the correct place if you're building down in the city if you're building down the town or in a community n5360 is the one to go for if you're building out on a tower if you want to cover big areas out into the um, out into the, uh, the the countryside for distance use x4 for coverage use x2 another little trick um here we see the the n545s uh, so x4 up on the top of the uh, up on the top of the hill pushing out for long distance long range high capacity X2, um, the X2 is a, X2, I'm lost it, was it this? X2 is a 45 degree antenna as per the, um, as for the X4. But remember we said the, the A5C has four connectors. You could put two of these, one over the top of the, one over the top of the other, and pretend it's an X4, which will give you the 3 dB. Seems a little pointless. You just buy a, must buy an X4. What you could do is you could put them alongside each other to, and combine them, so it goes from 45 degrees to 90. Or you can even put them back to back. Um, I've just done the design for a. Um, uh, a city in um, in, in Holland uh, where they're looking at putting these down on the seafront and on the lamp on, on the lamp post on the seafront one of these or uh, A5C one of these one side one of these the other side just pointing down backwards and forwards 
They're in the same channel. They're in the same. They're, they're, they're in the same frequency. They're just they're, they're just part of the same sector. So they're just back to back. Nice way of nice little way of using them. The X uh, two will also work really really well with the the new A five X. Um, if you have third party access points, if you currently have um, other people's stuff, shall we say? I'm not going to mention any names. Um, it's all, it's all standard stuff and it's all compatible. Um, I've had the question, what is the maximum height for the 360 antenna? Um, could be as high as you like, as long as your clients are all at a similar height. Um, I wouldn't install this more than, say, five or six meters difference between the two. Um, as an example of the, the, the sort of the deployment I've done with these, I, I put them in a, um, a housing complex, or a, 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 a gated community in, uh, in Johannesburg. Um, we were mounting the, the clients on the roofs of the, um, uh, of the structures. In fact, it was the old, it wasn't the, it was our old clients. There was old, old C5 clients, the old things. Um, it wasn't the new stuff. Um, we mounted the 360 um, on the top of a two meter bolt pole on, on, on the tops or on the top of a, a regular two story house. Um, and everybody else around, we were mounting at sort of gutter height on the two story house. That was all working fine. There was a three story um, tower block or three story dwelling at flats. Um, about 50 meters out, and we were installing on the roof of that. So there was a good um, differential of um, five to 10 meters between the base station and the um, and, and the radio for that for that client, and that worked fine. He was getting two, three hundred megabits per second. Um, the, there's a little bit of spread, but the, the point is, don't go is don't go too mad in terms of the the, the highs and lows, um, and you can. Check this with the planner, and we'll talk about the uh, we'll talk about this when we talk about the planner. So yeah, maybe five or six meters. Um, I'm going to go on a little bit of a, a tangent for a second. We mentioned three dBs and differentials. I'm going to show you something that isn't in the presentation, and probably should be. One second. Possibly, possibly should put this in the presentation. Um, this is something. This is how our our radios work. Um, all the radios it doesn't, matter, doesn't matter what uh, the frequency they are, or whether they're five gig or um, or whether they're um, eleven gig. We have a, a sequence that we have different, but the radios can run in different modulation levels. So zero to nine. The further up here you go, the the denser and more complex the the modulation scheme. So the higher up the higher up here you go the more data is trying to be is being shoved into that um, in, in, into that little bit of bandwidth so the higher up here you go the more data the more speed you're going to get but the harder it is to transmit so what we do is we measure the signal and we measure the noise and we change the coding dependent on how much gap you've got. So if you've got a little bit of gap between the signal and the noise, your signal to noise ratio is low. So you've got a little bit of space, so you can only squeeze a little bit of data in. So if you've only got an SNR of five, if you've only got five dB between your noise floor and your signal, in a 40 megahertz channel, you're only gonna be able to squeeze 
30 meg in. You're really, really struggling here because you've only got five. You're only got five. If your noise goes down, but your signal stays the same, and you've got say 15, so this this now gap between your noise and your signal goes to 15 dB. All of a sudden, we're looking at running 180 meg um, in this gap because this gap's much bigger. So this is the this is the key. This is the key here. It's noise and signal. Signal noise. SNR is the absolute key to, a, to, to, to any radio working well. If you can, the noise flow goes down even more and you get a really big 25 dB between here and here. In the same 40 megahertz channel, you're gonna squeeze 360 mega. Brilliant. So we always want to be working in clean, clean air where there, where there, is, where there's lap, where there isn't, isn't any noise. We know it's the real world that doesn't always happen. So what can we do? Um, the question was, uh, well, one of the questions was, one of the questions I've had was, why would you need four times N connectors? Well, if you've got four times N connectors, the radio can choose what, um, what, what, what stream it is. If you've got four N connectors, then the same installation, you can maybe use one of these and get, the three, and get that 3 dB. That 3 dB, again, here's our signal. Sorry, wrong way. Here's our signal. Here's our noise. I should write it in the back of your fingers. If that extra 3 dB brings that up, your gap's better. So you change antennas, you get a better, um, a, a better signal. Your gap between the two has gone up. That could be the difference. You know, 15, uh, SNR of 15. SNR of 17 and a half, that 3 dB could jump you, jump you from mod level four to mod level five, which could jump you from 180 megabits per second throughput to 240. It's all about SNR. And that's why we, that, that's why MIMO is so important and why, why MIMO and the, the multiple stream technology is such an important part of our, um, uh, of our, um, our proposition. Um, at the end of the, the three weeks, um, I'm going to issue a, 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 a download to a, a, a Dropbox, um, which has all the presentations in. Um, I think I'm going to drop this in as well, because I always get people wanting this. It's actually hidden away somewhere in one of our, um, in one of our help pages um, online. But um, I sort of extracted it and made it a little more, a little more user friendly. And I think it's a very useful tool to have if you're if you're deploying this sort of thing. It's also very, very good when we get to planning um, to, to to look at um, the real world effects of, um, of of SNR and, and mod levels, um, because there's a couple of interesting little things in the planning tools where um, this can make a huge difference. We'll come to that. I'm saying that a lot, aren't I? We'll, we'll come to that. Okay, so we've got a base station. We've had somebody climb up the mast, dangle around for a bit, and um, plumb it in. Nice, nice, neat installation, cables down, all powered up. Happy, happy, happy. That's working. We've got our antenna mounted, fixed, grounded, sorted, happy. Next thing we need are a couple of clients. So. Clients, clients, clients. We have two clients. We have, you can see the, uh, you can see the way we're doing this now. Client, five gigahertz. Client, five gigahertz, computerized, C5C. Um, slightly older product. Um, we've sold so many of these across the world. Um, the client products can also be used as point-to-point -point radios and without the advantage of, of GPS, um, but they do make really good um, short-haul um, short clients. So this C5C is for those clients that are right on the edge of your, your coverage area. So you've got your radio, it's got two little connectors on, the connector will go to a dish and you can put a 
great big 30 dbi um, dish on this um, in case you're stuck behind a tree or something like that so this is the client for extra push the guys that are right on the edge of your coverage zone also i guess if you're in a noisy environment because again it's it's all signal it's all noise you want to bring that signal up above the noise the better 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 received signal you get the better the um, the, the, the better speed you get so here's c5c now c5x is a special c5x is a special one um so this is our old, our old client product c5 um plastic nice drum um yeah All right but uh, we had a couple of problems with them they um they, they only held on with a single band and they made of plastic um if people thumped them they would come off uh, they weren't the most robust thing in the world but they worked but we listen to our customers because we're nice like that and we could uh, a couple of years ago last year last year we launched this little fella c5x now we call it a family of products although it's only one radio um because of of this here the radio itself is metal construction you can't hear that nice and solid aluminium there's a little cover here that's really difficult to get get off um, i've actually taken the wrist it was a little restra restraining strap so that this doesn't fall off the tower but i've taken mine off because it's easier to demo um and inside here in the right place here we go we have ethernet a couple of little lights and a reset so standard cat 5 in here clamps down nice and tight lovely two little jubilee clips that are included we'll attach it to a pole and you're away. Eight DBI antenna built into the product as standard. Brilliant for those clients that are just across the street from your from your point of presence. Um, if you want to go further, there's a range. There's a 12 DBI. There's a 16 DBI. There's a 20 DBI and a 25 DBI. And lost it one moment so this is what this is what happens when I'm tidy and I clean up after myself you might as well just leave me office okay so Here's our radio with its built-in 8 dBi antenna. If we want a 25 dBi, we take the 25 dBi antenna. <laughs> Horrible noise. We screw it on. Great advantage of this is nice and solid. It's a nice metal antenna. Um, you'll also notice here, see the, the central element here, um, it's, 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 a, it's a type of antenna called Cassegrain antenna. Um, if you look when I turn it around like so, so it's disappeared. So now you see it, now you don't. The, if you look at a lot of the competitor antennas, you'll see the central element protrudes from the front. Now if you've got interference coming from, from below, which is, you know, most, most, a lot of five gig interference comes from Wi-Fi systems and, and stuff like that. If you've got a protruding um, central element, it's gonna, you're going to get interference from the bottom or from the side, from other places. If you're getting interference from underneath here, it's not going to hit that central element because we've got this nice bit of metal in the way. So we aim this, we, we, this is designed to be I've got interference proof, but certainly fights interference. We only get our radio goes where we want it to go. And the radio that we don't want to hear, we don't hear. That's the whole point of good RF design. So the other advantage of this is you've done your network design, you've done your planning, you know exactly that this customer over here at this address needs a 
11 DBI antenna. You send the guys out in the truck, they load up with all the gear, off they go. They turn up and discover that um, two years ago, the customer, the wife, put a really, really big, fast growing tree in the garden. Um, it was just before Google went and did, came over with their satellite and did their, and did their overhead shots. So there's a tree in the way that you didn't know about. All of a sudden, that 12 dBi antenna isn't manly enough to do the job. It hasn't got the game to get through the tree. Now, I'm not a great advocate of running 5 gigahertz radios through forests. It, you know, it, it doesn't work. You know, we have to, uh, but no, no matter how good the product, we have to be aware of the laws of physics. But if you've got one tree in the way, you change that 12 dBi out for the little 20 dBi dish, you might find you bring that in. So the guys go back to the truck, unscrew the, 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 um, the, the, the little one, put on the big one, there's a little locking screw, lock it down, bang, the customer's working. The customer's happy, you're happy because you've not had to pay for the, for the guys to come home, get more kit and go back out again. And the installation has been done in, a, in, in one and it's away. It's a really, really good solution. Um, our, cast, our customers really, really love it. Um, the biggest problem with it, for, for any WISP um, is revisits. They, it's such a huge cost. The other joy of the Mimosa products is this, is, is, is this compatibility. You remember I mentioned the, um, the, the, the SRS mode and Wi-Fi interrupt modes earlier on. Wi-Fi interop is great in that it's compatible with other vendors. So if you're a WISP and you want to try Mimosa, you can put, put up an A5C with one of the antennas, use a 360, if that's um, the, the environment you're in. And existing clients running in, in Wi-Fi mode, and these are Another vendor's, um, uh, the, another vendor's uh, radios, as you can see. They'll, they'll talk to the A5C. So what you can do then is, okay, that's working. Well, we'll put some, we'll, we'll put new, new, new clients on. We'll put new clients on and, you, uh, and use um, and use C5X. So now you've got a mixture. You're, you're running in compatibility mode, but the the radios running in with, with C5X are running in Wi-Fi interrupt. Once that starts working, you can start migrating the older products over to Mimosa. Because we still, still believe that you're gonna get a, a performance improvement just because of the RF um, characteristics, because you're working, you know, the, the, these guys will improve a little bit because of the, uh, the technology at this end. These guys here, you've got the, 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 uh, the, the shielding technology, uh, our clean RF design are suddenly going to start outperforming these. So you can swap those out for Mimosa. Once you're on a complete Mimosa system, you can then switch to SRS and get the, and get the, um, the advantage from GPS Sync. The GPS Sync's a great thing. Um, I'll show you why. I'm going to move some of these radios before I trip over. You'll see me disappearing from the camera sideways. So this is uh, a very good, very, very good customer of ours um, in the um, in the states. Um, little town in Midtown America looks like something from a uh, sort of 1980s. Um, American movie, sort of a teen movie. Lots of little wooden houses, lots of trees. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice looking place. Um, Wisp there, um, it's been a, um, a, a Mimosa customer for a number of years. Um, in the next section, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll show you an interview with, them, with, with Kent, who runs this. Um, network running very well. He can't part of the town covered. He had 250 odd subscribers and he's giving them a 25 meg service, but he's using a lot of spectrum. Um, congestion wasn't a problem. He's, he, he is in the middle of nowhere. 
Um, there wasn't a huge amount of five gigahertz. It's not like running it in, the, in, in a big city, but there's still interference there. But so he's running 250 subscribers, 25 meg plus. He's using 15 channels. He's using 600 megahertz of spectrum. That's a lot. And it's a swine to manage. There's a lot of messing around. You've got to make sure that channels don't overlap and you get your channel planning right. And as it limits the size of the network. So he implemented SRS. Now SRS gives us the ability to reuse channels. It gives us the ability to synchronize the radios so that the radios don't trip over each other. Even if they're running in the same frequencies, they don't interfere with each other because they're synchronized. And that went from that to that. He's currently, I don't know how up to date this is, I'm sure he's expanded since. Um, he's currently covering the whole town. He's got more than 750 subscribers and he's giving them 200 meg plus. Um, and he's doing this in two channels. So it's 160 megahertz of spectrum, two 80 megahertz channels. It's a massive, massive, massive jump um, for, for him in terms of ease of management and ease of spectrum. So if you're operating in uh, an area where a spectrum is difficult to come by and you're really struggling to fit a network into the gaps in amongst the spectrum, then you'll see that um, the, the, the most of products make it, make it really, really easy. And I'll, 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 sh I'll show you what it, how, how bad it can be um, in, in a little while. So that's a, oh, that, that, that's a real world example. Um, so in the next section, I've got a, a video interview with Kent, which I can, I can show you. So I posed the question at the start, why Mimosa? Well, we can give you the fastest uh, speeds. Uh, we can give you uh, close to half a meg in terms of um, in, term, in terms of subscriber speed, 700 meg in point to point um, for, for the um, C-series radios. Price performance, we believe we're uh, 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 at the top. You know, it's, it, it's all about bang for your buck. It's all about speed, uh, cost per megabit. And we believe we're, um, we're, we're, we're there. Um, we do find that you know, some of the, um, the other vendors limit uh, channel sizes, um, limit uh, bandwidth. Some of the things like the EPMP and Medusa, um, at one point, um, the clients were limited to 90, 150 megabits per second. Um, Radwin, I think they, 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 they limit the radius to 200 meg client speeds. We can rise above that and give you the subscriber speeds for the, um, for, 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 for the right price. And using the, the micropop type, type architecture, keeping it small and dense, um, again, it's price performance. We can build a system using this architecture that'll give you two, 300 megabits uh, client speeds um, for you know, a very, very, very good price. The, a lot of the competitors now are going for, for example, the Medusa product, the, uh, the Cambium product, is awesome piece of uh, piece of radio kit but it's incredibly expensive it's also huge 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 sector antenna um and if you've got a small cluster of um uh, of users in uh, a community you just look at something like this up you don't have big chunky antennas all over the place um so this gives you a a, a really good uh, price performance set um at a, a really good price um 4.9 to 6.2 or 6.4 in some radios is useful. If you can use it, um, then, I, uh, then, then do so. Stay away from the noise. It's all about getting away from noise. It's all about getting away from that interference and making the best of what, we, uh, of what you can get. Um, we build everything solidly. We build everything to clients, uh, to, 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 um, to, to carry a grade. Anything that's going to go up on the mast, the APs, the, the, the high end point to points, which I'm going to come to in a sec, are built to IP67. They're built to survive being stuck at 100 meters up in the air in all weathers. The clients aren't quite so tough, but they don't have to be. Uh, but an IP55 rated client, when you get your hands on, on one of the C5Cs, you'll feel how solid they are. 
Um, they're solid, they're affordable, they're flexible. The, the twist on um, antennas are, um, are unique in the market. Um, and we design all our, all our products to have low, low, low power consumption. So again, for eco, eco installations, solar installations, if you've got to put a relay in the middle of nowhere, um, purely because you can't get a line of sight, um, the, 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 the Mimosa products are, um, are really, really good for, um, for that. So that's point to multi points. I'll take you through a, a quick journey through point to point now. I've not got so many of these to show you because most of them are a little, some of them are a little, a little large and some of them are up, out, up outside. We've got um, two, two product lines when it comes to point to point. Um, and they're, they're, they're fairly easily distinguishable. Our, our high end products are, are what we call our dual link products. So each of these has the ability to run two links or two radio streams. So what you can do is you're going to use two frequencies, each of which is going to run two streams. Now this will give you radio rates or IP rates of around about 1.4 gig um, across, the, um, across, the, across the link. The I'll come to the I'll come to that one. There's another question about some um, du duplex and full duplex. I'll come to that. The the radio rates on these the radio rates about one point is about one point seven that equates to a user rate or IP rate of one point four. Um, when I showed you the this earlier on, this is, is radio rates. So you've got to take about 20% off for overheads. And then that's your radio throughput. So if it's full, if you want to think of it in full duplex, you need to halve the figures you get here. So just to take a, a something that's easy, that's easy for my maths, MCS5 in a single channel at 40 megahertz. A little bit 40, you can lose 40, 40 meg for, for overhead, which leaves you, leaves, leaves you 200 meg. If you want to think of it in, in, in full duplex terms, that's 200 meg, that's 100 meg in one direction, 100 meg in the other direction, so that's 100 meg full duplex. It's probably the easiest way to think about it. So all of these, we talk, we talk about them being gigabit speeds. The IP rate on these is 1.4 gig. You can choose how that's split. Now we'll, 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 we'll come to that in a wee while. So all of these IP rate of, of, of 1.4 uh, across two frequencies. So they're dual link. They're dual link devices. So B5, you're starting to come to come to terms with the, with our naming strategy. That's a backhaul radio in five gigahertz. It's an integrated unit. Um, it's got a 25 dBi um, integrated antenna. It's good for about 10, about 10, 10K. Um, you have got a good gig, around about a gig, about, up to about 10K. Just push it further, um, your signal to noise ratio is gonna go down, so your rates are gonna go down. But you can look at this and adjust this within the plan and you can see what you're gonna get. Um, I'm very, very nervous about saying, oh, you'll get this speed at this, uh, 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 at this distance. Um, I'm always being asked to be pinned down to you know, this speed at this distance is always the question. Um, I normally refer everybody to the planner and say, try it, see, see what the planner gives you. Um, and then survey, because you've got to be sure that, that, that in some, some environments, there's going to be noise, there's going to be interference, and it's going to take a little bit as well. So always plan, always play with the planner, and I'll show you the plan a little bit. So there's B5. B5C is back home, five gigahertz, connectorized. So this is a B5 radio designed for an external, external antenna. 
So you can go to Jiras or something like that, and you can buy yourself a big 30 dBi, 32 dBi um, panel and push that radio even further. All of these radios, again, they've got GPS, so they're going to synchronize. If you've got multiple radios on a tower, all pointing in different directions, if you run out of channels, you can reuse channels and make sure, and, and as long as you configure them correctly. B11, similar product, backhaul device, 11 gigahertz. It actually goes from 10 to 11.7 if you're allowed to do it. Um, in a lot of countries, that's a licensed, um, a licensed frequency, so you have to apply for a frequency license from point A to point B. Um, it's a traditional microwave type slip fit antenna. We don't provide the antenna. This slips onto the back and bolts down with these four, with these four screws. Distances on these, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90K, depending on, um, on how big an antenna you put in it. Again, I normally recommend Jiris, an, uh, Jiris antennas on these. Um, they're, they're, they're very, very reliable. B24, backhaul device in 24 gig. Um, integrated, um, unlicensed in most territories. Distances up to about 3K. Um, it's a, a little radio, little 300, um, uh, little 30 centimetre dish on it. Um, easy to install. It's designed to go up against the, the products that are like, like a sick of this world. Short distance, high capacity radios. Um, very, very cost effective uh, to, to use. Um, the nice thing about 24 gigahertz compared with 60 gigahertz is, is rain fade. We're not as susceptible to rain fade in 24 as you, as you are in, um, in, in the 60 gig range. If you don't need that speed, if you don't need all of that speed, this is where the naming um, convention um, falls down. The client radios can be, con can be configured as, as backhauls. So you can set the radios up in point-to-point -point mode and you'll get yourself a point-to-point -point with around about 700 megabits per second um, airtime speed. Now, as I had a question as to whether that was for 4 duplex, 700 megabits per second point-to-point -point on this is not 4 duplex. Um, it's it's going to be it's going to be half that before duplex speed. And again. If I go back to, oops, one, one. If I go back to the right go, screen, running to screen, not really at this. So that would be, if you're running the, the, the client series radios, so C series radios, you've only got a single stream. So you've got one 80 megahertz channel. Your radio rate is going to be 866 megabits per second. Again, I always say the rough rule of thumb is lose 20%. Your IP rate on that is going to be 700 megabits per second, but that's split across both sets of time slots. Now you can choose how you allocate that, but you're going to be um, you're going to be running those those kind of speeds. So you're going to halve that 700 meg. Uh, for, you, for a full duplex speed, or or not, I'll come to something in a bit. So there's your your cost effective options. If you don't need the monster speed of the dual link, um, if you just want a little point to point link, um, then the, the the client the C series radios, the client radios work really well. Um, something I was talking to one of my colleagues about the other the other evening. The one disadvantage of running these radios in um, in point to point mode is you don't have GPS. Um, the client radios do not have GPS. If we're running in point to multi point, the, um, the the uh, the the access point does the GPS functionality and it controls the client. If you do have a point to point application and you need to use SRS and frequency reuse and synchronize it with others, 
But what you could do is use an A5X access point with a directional antenna and then either a C5X or C5C at the client end. So you could build yourself a point to point link using A5X and C5C or C5X at the client's end that's capable of synchronizing with the, the other radios on the, on the tower. It's quite a niche application, but it's possible and it's, and it's certainly doable. Um, it's something that occurred to, uh, occurred to us the other evening. Um, A5X makes for a, a very, very flexible little product. Now, one of the things I mentioned about um, bandwidth and I, uh, IP rates, because of the way these work, and these work with the TDMA and, um, uh, and SRS, is in most cases, we will allocate 50% of the time slots in one direction and 50% of the time slots in the other direction. So although you're getting 700 megabits per second, you're not going to achieve perfect balance across the two. Across the two. You won't achieve that, uh, that, that 350 full duplex. Or if you achieve the 350 full duplex, you might want more traffic in one, in one direction than the other. So what's something we've had in the point-to-point -point radios for a long time is the ability to put uh, a 7525 bias on the um, on the uh, on, on the data so that if you're backhauling internet for instance you're backhauling the internet closer most of, most of the data is going to be com is going to be coming downwards there's going to be very little going going upwards so you set a 7525 ratio on the time slots so that most of the data is coming down now, what we're doing on the new software is we're allowing that functionality on C-Series and on the point-to-multi-point -point radios as well. So, what I should do now is I'm going to hand over virtually to a colleague of mine, uh, Mr. Dustin Stock, who's based in the US, give my voice a, set, a rest for five minutes and um, show you the, um, the new features in the new software releases. Hello and welcome to another Mimosa features video with me, Dustin Stock. So today we're going to be talking about new major Mimosa software features coming in Q2 of 2020. There are several for software release 253, which is only applicable. Oops. And then we have a huge release called software version 280, which will be for the A5X, the B5, the B5C, the C5C, and the C5X. So the first features we're gonna go through are for A5, A5C. Uh, these will also apply to A5X, but remember this version is only for E5 and A5C, so we'll get right into it here. So there's a feature that you guys have been asking for for a very long time, it is called Da 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 dun dun 75 25 traffic split. Yes, that's right. We we finally have 75 25 traffic split. You can do either gender A or gender B, just like you can with uh, 50 50 50. Uh, huge, huge speed improvements for folks using 7525. We've got uh, many beta customers using this already. We've used it here in the office out in the field, and it's just astronomical changes for download speed for customers. So we hope that you'll enjoy 7525 for your, your radios and hopefully your customers will enjoy that as well. Um, the next feature is also something else that's been asked for for a long time and that is basically disabling the ethernet port. We're calling it service suspension. So we'll go to a client radio here. We'll go to the link page. And on the link page under rate limit, we have disabled data traffic. So what that means is anything behind the C5 will not be able to connect to the internet. You can still reach the radio from behind the ethernet port using the management IP, but no one can get to the internet when this is enabled. So if somebody doesn't pay their bill and you're not set up on a program like Sonar or Azatel or Preseam or, or something that controls data rates for people, log into the client and just flip the switch here and 
Well, they can't get on until they pay your bill. And then the final feature for 253 is the host information table. So you go to clients, host information. So basically the host information table tells you about uh, devices directly connected behind the C5. So if you say have a PoE to a router behind the C5, you're gonna see the MAC address for the router. If you, from the PoE, you have a switch that then connects to multiple routers, then you're gonna see entries for each of those routers behind the C5. Or if you don't use a router and you just let the customer plug in a switch and connect whatever they want, you're gonna have entries for every single one of those on the, the host MAC address table. As long as you're using a DHCP server to assign IP addresses. Most of you guys are doing that right now for, especially for those kinds of setups. Um, but the cool thing about this is, is that you can limit the number of hosts behind a client. So say somebody is plugging in 10 different routers or devices behind your C5, and you don't want them using up all your IP addresses, you can limit that to three or two or eight or whatever you want there to prevent them from connecting more devices than you want them to. Uh, you can also whitelist or blacklist specific host MAC addresses as well. So if they haven't paid their bill, this is another way that you can block the MAC address of their router so they can't connect to the internet. But it doesn't prevent you from accessing their radio or their router. So it's just another method of blocking them from being able to access the internet. So it's a really cool feature here. Hopefully this will help folks that have been looking for a advanced Mac forwarding table. Uh, hopefully this will help you. Oops. Now for software release 2.8.0. Again, this is for A5X, B5, B5C, C5C, and C5X. There is a, a whole list of features here, but there are three that I want to highlight. So let's go ahead and log into this radio here. Um, and as you can see, the UI is a little different than what you're used to. But for the first feature we want to talk about, uh, it's IPv6. So anything running 2.8.0 or newer firmware will support IPv6. So in this mode, you can do dual IPv4 or IPv6, or you can just select 4 or 6. So this definitely helps those folks out that are using IPv6 on their networks or want to start using IPv6 on their networks. The next thing, which is a huge, huge upgrade, is VLANs. So before we had very basic VLAN options for point to multipoint, um, no more. So this is for both point to point and point to multipoint in 280, where you can actually go in and configure VLANs. Um, you can forward all, forward untagged frames, insert VLAN tag and forward or drop. So you have lots of new VLAN options here to actually do what uh, has been asked before. Uh, a lot of the times customers would have to put in extra routers to make things happen. So hopefully they don't have to worry about doing that anymore. And then the last major feature I wanna highlight here is QoS. So we had some basic QoS options. Now we have some really enhanced and advanced QoS options here for you to actually you know, do quality of service on your links. So we're really trying to build up the networking side of things. We're trying to make things easier on you and your subscribers. So we've spent lots and lots of time working on these six features for you. This should be out in the next few weeks. So right there at the beginning of Q2 2020. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time on the next. Um... There we go. It's going to be beginning of Q2. I think we missed slightly. Obviously the, the coronavirus has impacted our, um, our release schedules a little. Um, it's, Really cause more problems for the hardware guys than it has for the software guys. Um, but this is a um, an exciting new release for us. Um, last target I saw um, a meeting on uh, a meeting on Monday was we were looking to to, to, to get this out uh, on the on the twelfth of May. I'm quite sure whether we hit that, but it's, we certainly won't be um, won't be far off. Um, 
as Dustin says in the, in, in, in that little presentation, um, it's two two separate um, two separate software trees. Um, one of which is for A5X and its um, and its sort of child sites. The other one is for the um, the older products. Um, we've had to make a little bit of a uh, a, a diversion there. But it's mainly around, uh, around controllability and providing um, uh, sort of higher end net, uh, net networking um, things. So the 75 traffic split is, is, is really, really useful. It's something we've had in point to multi point, in point to point for a while, but now we can put it in point to point to multi point. And the beta customers we've had in the US that have been putting this into um, Wisp networks have um, have loved it because it's suddenly given their uh, given them the ability to give them so much more speed to their clients. Um, so that's two five three, and and two eight two eight is what you will be running um, when um, you get your your A five X, and this gives us a whole lot. Um, QoS access control and IPv six um, are advanced features for the future that will be spun on and um, and developed and developed as we go so that's two two five three and two eight um and new sort of bits of software um something a, a, a good i mean i use the uh use an embedded youtube video there um mimosa have a lot of um, a lot of online resources. Um, obviously, we have the cloud, which I'm going to show you, but I'll show you um, um, in a second. Um, we've also got um, a very active YouTube channel. If you've not come across that, um, Mimosa Networks. Uh, search Mimosa Networks um, in 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 YouTube. Um, there's a lot of content on there. Uh, there's unboxings on there. There's install guides on there. Customer testimonials, the normal marketing sort of stuff that um, you get. There's a number of videos from um, from, from from Dustin and his uh, and his colleagues um, showing real networks, showing net, net networks being put in, showing alignment techniques, all things like that. Um, there's also a podcast um, uh, series called How to Build a Wisp. Which takes you from first principles through to equipment specification, um, both on the Mimosa side, but also everything around it. So looking at billing, looking at Solar and Azotel, network management, all those um, extra little bits and pieces that go around the edge. Um, it's an ongoing thing. They're add adding modules to it all the time. I've had a, um, a lot of customers telling me um, in the WISP in the WISP space. It's been very, very useful to them as they've, um, as they've grown. Um, we've also got um, very comprehensive um, online help and support uh, available in terms of um, help pages and wikis, um, how to's um, and um, uh, product specifications all available through the, through the support site. So I'm gonna show you the cloud system. Um, it's, Part, an integral part of the most proposition. Um, here we go. And log in here. If you buy the most radio, you need to set up a cloud account. Um, and there are three basic strands to it. Just jumps into something. There we go. The three modules. Design, unlock, and manage. And that's pretty much what you're going to do. You design a network, you buy equipment, you unlock it, you install it, and you manage it. Unlock is a, fun, is, is, is a fairly fundamental part of, um, of, of Mimosa. If I bob into there. When you first set yourself up in the cloud, you set yourself up a profile. In fact, I'll show, I'll show you mine, my network settings. So this is me, Ian Maynard, uh, my, my, my Mimosa email, um, email address. 
where I am, what's my business, all normal marketing sort of stuff. And as part of that, you tell it where you are. Now, my net network has been set up for United Kingdom. I've verified that I'm in the United Kingdom. Um, this network has also been set up for Ireland and for South Africa. And I've got a number of networks in my account, if I were to go for, that's another English one, in Maynard, France. That's my France network, and that's set up for, for France. Why would I want to do that? Well, we sell products all over the world. Go back to unlock. Across the world, there are a variety of different standards. Every local authority imposes their own stamp on the product. So there are frequencies that I can use in the UK that I can't use in Afghanistan. There are frequencies that I can use in South Africa that I can't use in the UK. And there are power levels. Each country has their own um, restrictions on power levels. Uh, in the US, for instance, uh, in five gigahertz, they can run twice as much power from a device as I can in the UK. So as a responsible manufacturer, we have to keep or try to try our best to keep on top of these um, the legislation around the world so that we don't sell products that can be installed illegally and the unlock and registration procedure is part of that so when you set your set your your network up the first one of the things you do is you say where you're where you're going to be operating this network so i've got this network set up for uk operation when i get a product i'm going to get the foot well, the first thing it will do is i'll power it up i'll connect to management the first thing all of our products do is ask for a software upgrade so that they're always installed on latest and greatest um, you can get that off the website we'll point you in the right direction to get that so your first start first thing you do is a software upgrade the next thing the radio will ask for ask you for is an unlock key and the radio hasn't even hasn't started transmitting yet. Before it starts transmitting anything, it will ask you for, a, for an unlock key. So you find the serial number. In the case of the C5X, it's there. It's also on the box, which makes life a lot easier. In the inner box. There we go. And there's a nice little um, QR code to um, to bounce you there. I hope that didn't trigger any of your uh, computers searching for stuff. So you can tap in the serial number into there. So let's do it just for fun. No problems with you knowing my serial number because this is my unit, and you won't be able to take control of it. Now this verify goes away to our database. It verifies that that's a, that's a valid serial number, so the product's not a counterfeit. It's identified as a C5X. Yep, it looks like a C5X to me. And I've got a choice. I can unlock it as a point-to-point -point product or a point-to-multi-point product. So I'm going to say point-to-point. -point. No, I'm not. I'm going to say point-to-multi-point. Agree to that and submit. And it's given me an unlock key. So I then tap the unlock key into the GUI of this radio and it's enabled for the network in Maynard and country UK. Brilliant. So this product will now operate for UK regulations it won't exceed uk power, power, power outputs it won't use any channels in the, that, that i'm not allowed to use in the, in, in the uk and it will block them out it won't let you do anything if you have a license to use channels that are not 
free in your country, you unlock the product in license mode, which says that I have a license to use these frequencies. We don't check, but it's you, it's you self-declaring that you have a license to operate. So if there is, if there is, it, 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 is, it is a problem, you've made the declaration, you get sued, not us. That up. In fact, turn that off. So this is our way of policing the airwaves. This is our, our way of policing what's going on and ensuring that you only install legal products for, for starters. There's another couple of advantages to this. Um, it registers the unit in your cloud account for management. It registers the unit as yours. And it also starts the warranty. Um, now, if this were to be stolen off a roof and somebody was to try and reinstall it, they try, they, they, they try to unlock it, it would query our database and it would say, no, nope, it's not happening. Um, this, is locked to, this, is, this is locked to somebody else's account. So it also acts as, a, acts as a security. So there's there's your three bits. Management, making sure you, you only install legal products and safety and security. So the, the product is yours and nobody can take it away from you. Um, there's an extra part to this. If you install a product with a GPS, so a B series radio or an access point, all of these have the GPS built in. If you were to do something naughty, like, oh, for instance, register it in Turkey and then take it across the border into Syria, where as an American company, we're not allowed to sell and, um, and try and use it. Because it's got GPS in and because it's registered in Turkey, it will flag as, a, as having a problem. And it will say, hang on a second, I'm not in Turkey, I'm in Syria. And it will ask to be re-registered. So it acts as a security thing to stop people taking products out of area, across borders, and using them where they shouldn't. So you can't say, oh, hang on, my neighboring country has, um, lets me have better power, better power levels. I'll just, I'll just um, enable it for that country, swim, zip it across the border and use it. You can't do it. Um, I've fallen foul of it once, uh, once or twice actually. If you're install installing very close to a country border and um, you get some interference and some GPS drift, occasionally it will think it's in the wrong country. Um, if you get into that situation, talk to our support guys, and they can manually um, modify the system to, 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 to not have a problem. Um, I had an issue in um, an installation in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where the, the border is, um, is, is just on the, um, on the, on the, uh, the, uh, the, the river between um, Kinshasa and the, and the other side. And we, were, we, we kept having the radios hop off, so we, we tweaked the, um, the, uh, the 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 setting to ensure they didn't they didn't do it. It works, um, but we can uh, we can jump in and help. So that's the unlock. Um, I'm going to show you show you design. Okay. See, I do a lot of I do a lot of design work all over all over the place. So let's go in. So we'll do a little bit a little bit of design work um, for those of you who um, this is um, where I am in the UK. I'm in Liverpool. Oh, I'm just just north of Liverpool. A little, um, a little uh, town called Formby, which is um, where all the, where all the Liverpool footballers live. Um, apparently, I've not seen any of them. I did see, did see Jurgen Klopp last night when I was out for a, out for a bicycle ride. Um, so I'm going to add 
A point to multi-point radio. Let's start with the point. Say I, I, I want to give some um, some service to my neighbours. So I'm going to add a point to multi-point radio. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can drag and drop to where you want it. Well, I'm about here on the map. Close. I'm there. So that's what, that's, now, that's now simulated as if it's uh, as if it's on my roof. So you choose what products you want. So let's start with an A5C. So what's there? Access point five gigahertz connectorized A5C. And under the foot, it's a it's a it's a fairly rural environment, or is it a semi-rural environment? Um, it's not going to be up high. I'm going to be so I'm going to say I'm giving service to all of my neighbours who've got similar size houses. So I'm going to use the 360. So we've set ourselves to A5C. We've set ourselves to, to a 360. Um, I've got a normal sized house, nothing fancy. So its height's probably going to be about seven metres. My clients are going to be about the same, and because it's a 360 degree antenna, the, head, the, the heading doesn't really matter. If you want to completely, if you want to completely build everything, you can specify frequency. I'm actually going to set the channel width to 40 megahertz. It's a 15 dB antenna, and I click here, and we can see where I'm going to cover. Boom, the world goes blue. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see here now a couple of things to be, to, 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 you, you, you've, got, you've got to be aware of. Number one, um, this software, this design, uh, design system is based on Google Earth elevation data. So this is purely based on the on the land um, and the land heights. So trees we don't calculate around. Buildings we don't calculate around. We don't have that data set. You've got to use some common sense. You've got to think about this and ensure that um, you 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 you're doing this in the real world. I'm a huge advocate of um, testing. I always, always, always test my, my new installations. I'll go out there in the field with a pole, with a car, with battery packs, with radios, and I will test because it's the only way you can be sure of what's going on in the real world. Um, there's a couple of things you can change. I mean, this is assuming that everybody around me has got line of sight of me there's no there aren't any trees well in real life that's not going to happen so let's let's make things worse there might be let's say a couple of branches I'll draw it again now you can see that's pulled us down now i think this is this is now getting a little more realistic in terms in terms of coverage because we can handle a couple of branches i mean if you look at the um, at the satellite photo, if I, if I turn, I can't do it just here. But you can see there's a there's a fair there's a fair amount of green there. The other thing to to think about is is, is where you are. Um, this is figure is into is your tree density so this is working a few branches or one tree two trees three trees let's face it three trees you're going to be you're not going to be transmitting very far at all but let's do it in a couple of branches this here is interference um so this will add suburban levels of interference i think 20 db is a little high for for my area you'll see here it really really limits my it really limits my coverage um, I think for a more 
uh, a more accurate level would be somewhere between the two, maybe maybe 10. So it gives you the option to add custom interference figure there. So let's work on that. Now you see we've got three different colors here. Now this is an important um, point when looking at looking at this uh, at this planning system. Um, what the three colors give you is this is assuming you're using a C series client. This is a point to multi point planning system. So this is going to assume that you're using a C5X or a C5C. So this is saying that in this area here, in this dark blue area, dark blue area here, to achieve MCS seven or greater, you're going to need a 16 dBi antenna. So within this area here, to get MCS seven, so if I go back to my little chart here, MCS seven, so in a 40 megahertz channel, that's your radio rate of 300 megabits per second. You're going to need the 16 dBi hall to go on here. In this area here, to get the same MCS7 coverage, so the same 300 megabits per second radio rate, you're going to need 25 dBi. And for this area here, you're going to need a 30 dBi, which is going to be a C5C with an external antenna. Now, that seems a little, a, li a little over the top. How many of you? provide point to multi-point clients with speeds of in excess of 200 megabits per second. I would suspect very few. For somebody like that, you're probably going to put a point to point, point system in. So the planning actually, the planning system actually gives you a little bit of extra granularity uh, and you can look a little bit deeper. So I'm going to select a building. I'm going to select this building here, which is a public house. It's a pub. But I may have to go a little bit out to a little bit further out to indicate this. So we can click here, and this building here, number two cheap side, at with a 12 dBi on the C5X, that's the smallest of the antennas, it will get an MCS rate of seven. So that, that MCS rate of seven is that 300 megabits per second. That's great. So this, this link here, provided we don't have any trees in the way, and you can see it does a little path profile for you at seven meters to seven meters, will achieve a good radio rate of 300 megabits per second. But what if you need to go out a little further? Let's, let's push, push this. So I'm a little bit further out in the village. I'm going to go into the village centre here. And now we see things getting interesting. So, at first look, you'd look at these figures and say, well, I've got to put a 25 dB, dBi antenna on. I've got to put a big antenna on because we, these are green and these are red. And red is bad and green is good. And what you have to remember is that this has been written for US-based customers, US-based ideas and US-based markets. So yeah, we can go down there. We can go to that, that, that site. We can install a C5X with a 25 dBi antenna and the guy will get mod 8. Mod 8, to jump across to here, is 360. So 
a little over, a, probably about 160 mega, megabits per second full duplex in real terms. Or less if you, I mean, if you, if you put the 2575 on for his download, it'll give, it'll give, give him maybe two, 200 megabits um, uh, download speeds. Now, you may not need that. Um, I know very little WISPs, very few WISPs that give, give all of their customers those speeds. You may not want, you, if you, you may decide that you don't want such a large antenna, you put a, a 16 on, and that will give him MCS4. MCS4, radio rates 180. If you're only giving him 20, 30, 40 megabits per second, you don't need the super, super, super high-end MCS rates. So you, you can look at this and take a, take a good view on what's going on. So that's my first takeaway for, 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 for this kind of thing when, you, when you're looking at the planning is think of it in terms of, of your market and your customers and what your customers need, not in terms of pure greens and reds and what our, my, my American colleagues think you think your customers need. Because you know your customers, you know better, you know what, their speed, what speeds they require. Uh, if I take this right out to the, the edge here, you can see here it's, it's saying that a C5X won't work, it's red. But yeah, it will. With the 25 dBi antenna, you're going to get MCS5. MCS5 equates to 240 in a, um, in a, in, in a 40 megahertz channel. That may be that that may be more than enough for that um, for, for that customer. In fact, I'll be I'll be honest. It's a fairly rural location. I'd be very surprised if um, if British Telecom gives them a speed um, close to that um, on a, um, a DSL circuit. Um, so you can compete with the the fiber guys, and you can good give you really 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 good high speed service. Now this is just using the um, the the Omni. Um, just a question about uh, about software control for, for for data rates. No, it's not something we do in terms of limiting the the mod levels, um, but you can set different um, classes of service. Um, within the uh, you can set uh, within the client so you can have a group of uh, a group of clients that are limited to, to 50 meg megabits per second a group that are limited to 100 megabits per second um, you set up classes on the on the access point and assign your uh, clients into those groups so as long as you've got the 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 the, the, the basic speed there you can throttle the throttle the data speed back um, you can't control the moderates though um, now, if you're in a situation where the Omni isn't the, the appropriate choice, you can model the other antennas. If I take a look at the X4 here, for all that, you can see, boom. Still quite low, so it's not percolating, so it's, so it's not propagating that far. It's probably too low for a, um, a sector antenna. You'd want that, you'd want that higher up um, and, and aim down ever so slightly. And you can see that this guy now has now dropped out because you can't see anything. But if I were to put that, ooh, a little bit higher. No, I put it higher, I'm going to have line of sight. And I'm going to have less interference because I'm going to be higher, higher than my interferers. All of a sudden, I'm going to start transmitting an awful lot further. So it gives you the ability to start pulling these together. There is one small limitation with the, uh, with the planning software. So if I, if I save that, now, ENAP, new group, 
Yeah. Matt can spell even if I can't. So the way this does it now is I now have a tower called Ian House and an AP called Ian AP. What you can't do is put uh, in the planner is put multiple antennas on on one radio. I know that I said that the the A5C will support two M5 uh, M545 X2 antennas, but you can't so simulate that unfortunately. So what you'd need to do would be to add another AP to that tower to simulate it. So again, we're going to make that so an A5X this time. You can see this time it won't let us use the X4 because it's only a two port um, radio, 15 meters, on a heading of 180 degrees. So due south, draw. And that's now running. So I change that. So save that. Pull it south. Now once it's saved, I can go into my training group and get a view of everything that's planned in my network so far. So that's all looking good. So that's the, the point to multi-point planning. So you can experiment with the different antennas, you can experiment with different heights, experiment with um, whether you were one tree in the way, two tree in the way, a forest in the way, although I don't recommend that, and build your network up and simulate it and see what you're, you're gonna be expecting. The other side of this is looking at the um, the point to point side. Now I mentioned um, that there's a, a number of ways you can find you can find um, sites. We've got our tower here that I've al al already um, specified, Leon's house. I built a huge mast on top of it, which I'm sure has really really upset my neighbours. But I'm going to connect a, um, another house in with, with a point to point system. So I can add a point to point. So we're going from Ian House to somewhere else. A couple of options. I can double click here and it will place a draggable marker that I can drag off across the map. I can put in coordinates. If I've got GPS coordinates for the other site, I can tap those in and, um, and it'll, it'll work it out or it's based on Google, so I can start typing an address. It's Tarleton Road in Southport. So that is 12.94 kilometers away. Around here, the ground, the ground is really flat, so line of sight, it's good. So what, by default, it goes to a B5. So this is one of our B5 dual, ra dual stream radios. At this sort of distance, 12K, it's perfect for the, um, for, 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 the, uh, for, for, for the B5. You've got an SNR, calculated SNR of 30 dB, which will give you a radio rate of 1.7 and aggregate IP rate of 1.3. That is the absolute sweet spot for a B5. Um, the sweet, sweet spot for most of the most of the Mimosa radios is around about 30 dB. If you designs to be designed to be around about there, that's absolutely perfect. 
We can take a look at this in other ways. We can, what happens if we tried a B5C, so connectorized with a 32 dBi antenna? Well, as expected, it's going to add another 10 dB or so to the SNR. Um, you know what? That'll work just as well. You can make subtle adjustments. So I can go into the link settings and play. So at the moment, this is running as 2B80, so two 80 megahertz channels with 32 dBi antenna at each end. Um, what could I do? If I knew I was going to be struggling for, for space and be getting lots of interference, like there's no way I was going to get two 80 megahertz channels clear, I could try running the radio in two 40 megahertz channels. So I recalculate that, I close that, you can see, well, we're using half the bandwidth, so it's halved. So we're now running at 800 meg radio rates, 640 aggregate. What else could I do? So what? I'll take you back to dual 80. The antenna here, 32 dBi antenna, all good. At the far end, it's a, it's a private premises. They've, I've, sh I've showed them the um, uh, I've showed them the the 32 d dBi antenna, and the guy and the guy said, "Damn, that's a bit big. I don't want that on my house." So I've sourced another antenna. It's a little bit smaller. And it's only got 24 dBi. Is that still viable? Recalculate. Have a look. So that gives us 35, 36. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work very nicely. So you've got the ability to play within the link settings. You can also add, it, if you add extra cable loss in and things like that. So if you've got the right, if the radio needs to be away from the antenna and you know you're going to have a lot of um, a lot of cable in there, or you know there's a lot of interference in there, you can make change and play with it that way. It's a very very useful little tool. Just to show you the other way of doing it, if I save that. Just to make life easier, exalt and load. Boom. That's now saved within our little network. So we're building this up bit by bit by bit. We'll add another point to point here. You know where the A point is, B point. Doing it like this is useful. I, I sometimes use this if I'm, if I'm doing designs for um, an area I'm not um, familiar with. Um, I can, well, I will use it to try and drag and find, find gaps through mountain passes and places like that. But let's pull this right out. Um, So now we're starting to push the limits. So here's our B5, we're at 18K and yeah, we're starting to get problems. We're starting to get Fresnel zone clipping. So if we were doing this, we'd need to raise the height here. So there, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's still running at full, at full work. So you can add a little bit further. I think I'll about to... Now we're over the peak, so that's good. That's caused a problem. But you can see it gives you a very, very easy, flexible little tool for, for building your network up and playing and, uh, and playing around. How are we doing for time? Two minutes or two hours. So that's about it as far as the, the design side is concerned. I'm just going to save that. The best way to learn the design tools is to play. So I'd encourage all of you to um, get yourself an account set up on, on, on Mimosa. It doesn't, on the, on the Mimosa cloud, it doesn't cost you anything. You can access it from mimosa.co. Have a play, work out and, and then do some simulations. It's a very, very simple piece to, to, piece to, to, to use. 
Um, a question that just noticed, um, what do I think about point to point on locations that are typically foggy? Really foggy. <laughs> Fog isn't too much of a problem. The, 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 the planner um, has settings within it for, 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 for rainfall as part, of the, uh, the, as part of it, but fog isn't generally a, um, an issue for, um, for, the, for, for these radio systems, um, particularly not, not, not 5 gig. I used to install lasers and fog was the absolute killer for those, but um, these aren't, um, aren't, 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 aren't so effective. Um, uh, be a little bit careful if you're running over water. You don't want the um, the Fresnel zone um, catching catching water. If you need water, if you're going over over a large body of water, then you need to you need to go high. Um, the other thing, as part of this, um, before I go to show you, is is this. Now, I'm here to help, um, but I can't talk to everybody. All of the time, um, I'm quite busy. Although I'm not travelling at the moment, so I'm probably a little more available than usual. Um, but if you have an issue with a with a product, um, we've got teams on standby. I'm not going to say 24/7 because it's not quite 24/7, but nearly. We've got support teams in the US and in Colombia um, to cover time zones that side of that side of the world. And we've got a, another team in um, in Turkey that, um, that 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 do support, and they're there to help you. If it's a more salesy type inquiry, they may direct they may direct you towards me. If I'm available, I'm quite happy to help. But if you have a problem problem, um, then our support teams are the guys to talk to. And the easiest way to get to them is from either the service or any of the design tools on here. Is this button here? This will enable you to them to dr drop them a message, and you can chat to them. They're actually um, targeted on answering these chats as quickly as they can. So, the, by far, the quickest way to talk to Mimosa is by using this little button, using this little box here. Um, everything is logged. Everything is given case numbers. Um, everything is trackable. It's a really, really useful system. So always remember that. Always remember their help. Um, they say they'll drop, drop, drop me an email or WhatsApp. Um, the phone's normally on, but if I'm obviously if I'm on an airplane heading somewhere, then it may be a little while before I get back to you. I think I'm going to call it call it this that call it there for today. Um, next week I'm going to talk more about the point to multi point product go in in a little more detail, show you how to configure, and we'll also talk about the management and exactly what you can and can't see within the management system. Um, I hope this has been useful. And um, please come back and join me next week. Thank you very much for your time.